The problem described in Blake Peterson's article is based on this growing geometric pattern. Students choose an attribute of this pattern, say area for instance, and then represent the change in that attribute numerically, graphically, and algebraically. For this lesson study, I modified the problem in two ways. First, in order to facilitate a review of linear and quadratic functions, I chose the two attributes for students to look at. I chose perimeter because it was linear and area because it was quadratic. Secondly, I put the problem into a patio context where students were asked to determine the maximum patio size which could be constructed for a given cost. My main problem objectives then are listed here. I observed two different students as they worked on this lesson. Both were high school juniors of approximately equal ability. Here's the problem as I presented it to the first student. Initially, my student was unsure of how to tackle this problem, so she decided to take a simple four-block patio and determine its cost. Then, as she tried larger sizes, she noticed a pattern. So here she explains how she came up with an algebraic expression for perimeter directly from the geometric representation. Okay. Um, like, that just made, they made a pattern there. So, okay, so you do the number of ones that are touching the house plus one more than that number. So this is one, so then okay. two plus one is three. And this one's three, and three plus four, seven. And this one's five, and draw all of them. And then five plus one is six, so six plus five is eleven. And that's work for all of them. We should draw the next one to make sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's count them first. Wait, let me draw the line there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 plus 8 is 15. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, can you write that in symbols? I guess... Oh, number of um, sides touching the house. Okay. That's X. Okay. And so X plus X plus 1 equals perimeter not touching house. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that just did for me. <laughs> From here, my student went back to the cost formula, trying to come up with a shortcut based on these relative proportions. With guidance, she eventually proved to herself that this relationship would not be valid. She was unsure of what direction to go next, so I steered her back towards developing a formula for area successfully used this along with her perimeter formula to express the total cost in terms of base number of blocks. The next clip shows her as she's finishing up the problem. $27.96. Okay, so now we have to go to the next one and see if that one's over $3,200. Okay. So that would be 23 blocks and then that's 12 squared, 144. Okay. So for this other one, we do one of truth. Yes. So yes. Okay. So what does that tell you? What you so, just did. Um, this is more than thirty-two thirty hundred. Okay. So you can't have twenty-three blocks. Okay, so 21 was correct. Okay. Next, I asked if there was a way that she could change the patio configuration so that we could have a cheaper patio but still have the same area. This is not the right table. So this was 
five box touching house. That's what you have here. Yeah. Which is nine blocks, right? Yeah. Oh, three by three. Right. <laughs> I can do that. Okay, but then say your house is like this sweet shaped house that looks like an L. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd only have to pay for six mm -hmm. instead of eleven. Mm -hmm. Or even nine if your house is in a sweet shape. <laughs> or if you had a really cool house, you could just engulf the whole thing. After clarifying the difference between recursive and explicit equations, this student set out in a very organized manner. She made a table containing perimeter and area values for some simple cases. The graphs followed, as well as a recursive equation for perimeter. But when it came to determining a recursive equation for the area, she was stumped. So maybe tell me what you're thinking here. Um, well, I'm just trying to figure out how you could, like, put an x odd number in terms of, like, a mathematical equation, I guess. Do you think so, you'd be using a variable? Um, yeah, I think you'd have to. Wouldn't you? Because you... I guess you could have like new equals old plus the difference between the previous two numbers plus two. <laughs> At this point, we discussed different notation schemes. She decided on a variant of the usual subscript notation where n referred to the base number of blocks rather than the nth term. Using this system then, she was able to work out a recursive equation for the area. Her equation was a sub n equal to a sub n minus 2 plus n, which is equivalent to new area equal old area plus n, where n jumps by 2 for each step. The story for the explicit equations was similar. The perimeter came very easily, whereas the area relationship was very challenging for her. Afterwards, we discussed how it went. If you were in a group doing this, do you think it would be easier or harder? Um, probably easier because I tend to make a lot of mistakes in like a group and we could like check over each other's work and collaborate mm -hmm. to come to this conclusion. Mm -hmm. okay. At this point, I wanted to see how she would handle the cost constraint problem that the first student had been posed. Um. From what you have now, do, would you have an idea of how to figure this out? And I don't want you to actually do it, but I'm just wondering if you would have any idea how you would figure that out. Um, yes, I think I would. Okay. Because um, you just be taking the information from um, the formulas I've already done. Okay, which formulas would you use? Would you use the recursive ones or the explicit ones? Um, probably the second. Okay. And what would you be solving for? You'd be solving, well, since you know the cost, then you'd be solving for the total number of base, or the length of the base. Good, yeah. Okay. In summary, then, the revised problem seemed to have the intended effect um, the second student easily made connections between the various representations shown with the solid black arrows in this diagram. Um, the one connection that she didn't make was between the algebraic and geometric representations. 
Um, and in retrospect, I wish that I had steered her in this direction because I think that would have helped her a lot with uh, trying to figure out the formula for area, the formulas for area. Um, and if I taught this again, I would definitely um, try to keep that in mind. <laughs>